Welcome everyone. This is the Jenkins Governance Meeting. It's 20th of March, 2023. We have a claim to GitHub Trust and Safety as one of the items on the agenda, news, action items, JIRA license changes, CDF topics, community activity, and as a final item, possibly adjusting our meeting time for the European change to daylight saving time. Any other topics that need to go on the agenda? Okay, then let's get started. First, uh, maybe Daniel, would you be willing to give some background on this claim from BNC, BMC or Alexander, whichever one of the two of you? So late last week, I think on Friday, we the admins of the Jenkins CI uh, GitHub organization or owners, I think is the term, received a notification from GitHub Trust and Safety that uh, BMC Software Inc. Um, claimed uh, publication of private data, um, private information that was posted without consent, copyrighted source code or password of BMC Software Inc. If it's a password, if it refers to the string CompuWare, so that's a bit awkward. Um, so I know that Tim reached out to the committers to understand what's going on. At the same time, um, I filed a pull request because, I mean, I don't know where this is going, but I would rather not get us kicked out of GitHub because they file a bunch of claims. Uh, I don't know whether the comparison holds, but I had I have heard horror stories of YouTube uh, copyright claims. So um, then we received a message from one of the maintainers of the plugin in question that they were going to fix it, and they did so today by rewriting the repo history uh, in some manner, I think. Uh, so a bunch of commits changed, uh, which obviously isn't ideal. Um, and I pointed out to them, well, while the immediate notification from BMC was addressed, it would not address the general problem of an organization claiming its own published source code as private information and messing with our organization based on that. And we haven't heard back from them since. And Alex pointed out like half an hour ago or so that uh, they recently relicensed several of their plugins under a non-free license. They were previously MIT and are now some proprietary 100-page thing that I haven't even bothered reading, uh, which is against our hosting guidelines. Um, so now the question is, how do we proceed here? Uh, my preferred, uh, although, uh, of course, a quite disruptive approach would be suspend everything from BMC and figure out how to proceed from there. Um, whether they even want to remain hosted, what's going on with the automated copyright claim to GitHub trust and safety and so on. Uh, do we maybe even need to delete or uh, move artifacts out of the way? Uh, that's another uh, concern. In this case, the copyrighted source code location was in tests, but if they were to claim source code in production code, um while it's not github i mean our our defectory hosts source jars um and then they say well you're or might say well you're not supposed to publish that right I, i'm clearly not a lawyer but i would say it seems safer to just nuke everything and and figure out where to go from there let me ask a quick question um, when did we receive the mail? Was that last week or some sort of? Friday or Saturday, I think Friday. Okay, if it was Friday and they stay three business days and include Friday, that would mean we need to act until tomorrow, which seems a bit short, but yeah, I'm definitely in favor of this approach because if this is one of those DMCA claims you can file on GitHub, GitHub is pretty eager to take down these repositories pretty fast. 
Right. And so <clears throat> for full transparency, uh, this plugin is published by BMC. We get copyright claims by BMC. So, I mean, I, I would just delete it out of principle and let their customers yell at them and maybe then they change their position. Good timing to join. Yeah. Great timing. Hi, Oleg. Hello, Oleg. Yeah. Hi. I commented on the ticket, but I guess I agree with Daniel because uh, the situation is loud and clear. So the, the message then is it's a request. The, the simplest response for us is we suspend distribution of all BMC CompuWare plugins until this is resolved. And unless it's resolved in an acceptable fashion, OSI compliant alliance, they stay suspended. Now, Daniel, you mentioned deleting more things. So. Right, so what we can also do is we can block further plugin releases uh, until the situation is resolved. Um, we can basically messing with the permission files. Um, and the uh, third thing we can be doing is we can delete all previously published releases of these plugins from Artifactory. And when I say delete, I mean create a private repository and move the artifacts over, basically being non-destructive, except it appears gone. And if the situation is resolved, we can always move things back. This is not very different from how we publish staged artifacts during a security release, uh, where we move them from a private or copy them from a private repository to a public one. And that way then they appear. So that yeah. would be a more complete uh, removal of all of their stuff. Uh, obviously a lot more uh, or some more effort uh, that we may not even uh, need because so far, as nobody has complained about our defectory as far as i know uh, so for me yeah, it looks like quite a drastic measure uh so first of all uh yeah, if we removed uh, only artifacts with license con uh, violation then i am plus one for that uh, but removing all the versions uh, that are oci compliant i think it would be too much and uh, for me, actually, um, yeah, as Daniel said, we have never had complaints regarding artifactory. So for me, removing uh, non-compliant artifacts should be enough. But actually, the trick is that the complaint is filed against the GitHub repository. So unless we mitigate the GitHub repository, uh, I think uh, we may stay red flagged. Ah, yeah. ah, okay. So, so we may need to make the repository private, just to keep from being, being. I'm not sure about uh, whether it should be private or whether it should be transferred to another GitHub organization. For now, uh, but yeah, yeah, for me, one of the concerns. Sorry. Like, like Jenkins transfer or something like that. Maybe just as a holding. Area for a moment. Well, okay. BMC, uh, who knows? Uh, yeah, for me, the concern is that if we keep it in the main repository, uh, though uh, the flag itself uh, won't go. Right. I mean, uh, which is also for me, for to restore publication, I would like a resolution of the GitHub trust and safety issue, right? Because if they change the license file around, and say, yeah, we'll we re resolve the situation by rewriting repo history. Although I haven't looked into detail what exactly they did there. Um, that still might mean we have sort of a strike against us or however GitHub tracks these things. Mm -hmm. yeah, so personally, I would just transfer it to BMC. I'm not sure how how would we do that. We don't have permission to transfer to a BMC owned repo. Uh, yeah, so there are two questions. Firstly, do they own the whole code committed to that repository? 
uh, if so, we can just say the admins that, okay, we can transfer it uh, to your GitHub organization. Then you do whatever you want uh, and then file a new hosting request uh, once you addressed all concerns. Oh. I see what you're saying. So what you're saying is transfer the repository to, the, to a, an organization designated by the maintainers. And they say BMC, they say whatever, their own personal account. Uh, got it. Okay, to the to an organization mm -hmm. def defined by the maintainers. So basically, it becomes theirs, and then they have to submit to rehost it. If we and we then decide if we want to host it. Yep. I well, think, I think uh, we want uh, once all the issues are solved. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure that it's going to happen uh, because uh, yeah, from what I saw in the comment history, right now it's not given that they would revert to the license. And uh, if even if so, it may take ages because of legal involvement. Mm -hmm. Right, but what would moving the repository accomplish compared to making it private? So GitHub suggests in their email that the sensitive information, which is the string computer and the Java doc opening comment start, uh, is sensitive information that, well, we, we can just do make it private, right? And then go from there. Uh, of course, the, because in both cases, the problem is, it needs to be resolved in some manner, preferably by them telling GitHub, oh, our bad, we didn't mean to send this email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Dan, Dan, I was thinking, if we make the repository private as recommended by GitHub, we resolve GitHub's concern, right? The, their concern is private information as, as non-sensitive as the word CompuWare is should not be disclosed so it's the repository is private if then we want to transfer that private repository to the plugin maintainers we can do that to their organization we can do that as well but if we make it private initially that seems like a, an immediate win right um because if i understood only correctly the transfer would also only be temporary unless they resolve their stuff right so no, make... the transfer will be permanent, uh, as well as the publishing, if they do not fix the licensing. Uh, and uh, CompuWare uh, flagging, uh, yeah, for me, it's rather less important thing, because it's no-brainer that uh, they can revert this claim, because, yeah, uh, there is no sensitive content except uh, the Java string. For me, the biggest concern is the fact that it's no longer OCI licensed. Uh, right. But yeah, maybe I, I mean, mixed uh, two <laughs> concerns, but uh, yeah, for me, it would be nice if you can just uh, give it to them and then repost. I mean, the OSI thing, uh... So, so a, a major immediate concern for me is, as I mentioned, the GitHub trust and safety thing, because if I, I don't know how this sort of situation can escalate against us in a manner right. that affects the larger Jenkins AI organization. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. They have like 10 plugin repos. They file a GitHub trust and safety issue against each of them. And GitHub says, yep, we're not going to deal with these criminals anymore. And then there has been a Jenkins CI organization uh, in the past. Um, and so for me, that's sort of the immediate concern. Now, obviously, we per our hosting guidelines, we don't want to, we don't want to, um, publish OSI stuff, which is where the suspension comes in. But uh, to protect the Jenkins project, the uh, trust and safety thing seems uh, the more urgent one. And, and for that, we could make this one repository private, and we've resolved it. Now, CompuWare may then file a claim against another repository, and we'd have to make it private as well. Or we could just admit we're going to do all, all of the BMC repositories we can detect as private right now. 
Right. Um, the next problem is if we make the repository private, it uh, detaches everything else from the network. So mm -hmm. they lose the fork relationships, which okay. will make development more annoying for the BMC folks because clicking mm -hmm. on create pull request becomes more difficult, but that's probably going to be their problem. Does but it also so new uh, documentation on uh, the plugin side? I guess so. Yeah, because it wouldn't, well, I think it wouldn't be readable anymore, right? And, yep, and it will sure. already be listed as suspended. Sus suspend the plugins, assuming that Daniel's pull request to suspend is merged. I'm sorry, go ahead, Daniel. You should answer Oleg's question, not me. Uh, no, that seems uh, correct. Yeah, so the documentation would be gone, but at the same time we sus would suspend the plugins, so that would those would be gone anyway. Now the question is: In my pull request, I uh, suggest the suspension of all of the Compuware and BMC uh, stuff. Basically, I looked at the maintainer email addresses, and everyone with a BMC email address got their stuff uh, suspended. Um, whether that's more than we need, because so far it seems both the license thing and uh, obviously GitHub Trust and Safety so far is only uh, interested in one plugin. It seems limited to co to the things previously owned by Compuware. Whether we should uh, make the scope of this pull request smaller or whether we should just remove everything uh in an attempt to perhaps uh, get them uh, to more quickly resolve the situation okay. so the publish all the plugins that part seems clear remove uh, personally i don't have a strong preference I mean, uh, the amount of work for uh, github or admins is basically the same you convert the repository to private, you create a team to grant the access, uh, and then uh, you revert everything once uh, fixed. So for me, just one repository maybe, or maybe we could uh, act proactively if there are strings. So if they are really concerned about CompuWare string, so we basically take private all the repositories where it's mentioned. For I don't example. think that would be sufficient to protect us because if this was filed by some kind of corporate effort that was hunting down strings and filing these complaints, then I'm sure that's not the only string in their database. They would they would likely have a large set of passwords that they're searching for. So I I don't I don't think that the single string compuware is the only thing that they would be looking for. Maybe. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. I certainly would not expect that to be the only password to be the, that would be a problem. So, Oleg, back to your your suggestion, it was we could proactively search for or search for su suspect strings in the BMC or BMC and CompuWare repositories, and if we detect them, then decide to make those private as well. Mm hmm. I think so. I mean, uh, the problem with that is uh, where do we go from there, right? Uh, what can the maintainers do to make us make the repositories public again? Right. Well, firstly, they reversed uh, their own claim then probably write uh, us uh, uh, written information that they have no legal concerns about the content of these repositories so that we can save it for the future should they both uh, go crazy again. Right, basically you want a uh, proactive confirmation that the other repositories they have not yet complained about are fine. Yeah. And that would be a prerequisite to resume hosting. I think so. And I thought I was harsh. Well, if they send complaints, uh, I think it would be perfect.
I have three proposals that we could discuss. One for GitHub repositories, one for future releases, and one for past releases. I think those are the three um, the three things that we've been talking about. So here's here's a here's one proposal for each of those topics. We can we can modify this proposal, but I'm kind of just collecting what we've been discussing so far. So we no longer consider the artifacts to be relevant, at least for now. Uh, not. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess. I. You mean for for past releases? Right, because suspension is just a flag in the uh, tool that generates JSON metadata, right? So the artifacts would still be. Oh yeah, no, I'm in favor of that. Uh, can we? Let me see. Um, let me change that then to say. Um, suspend distribution of of all copyware BNC plugins. Does that does that work, Daniel? Uh, no, so. I, those are two independent axes. So suspend distribution means they don't show up anymore in the JSON and on plugins Jenkins IO. And a di different axis uh, is that that implies the first indirectly is uh, remove the public artifacts and artifactory. So we no longer uh, distribute the Maven artifacts of these plugins. Yeah. I think there's yeah. So for the for, and for each of those two items, there's two ways we could go. There's removing all or removing only non-OSI licensed. So I guess for bullets three and four, there's there's two alternatives. basically identify which releases happen with the non-free license and uh, just suspend those releases. No, just suspend only non-compliant things. Yeah, and the same applies for the artifact repository, right? Mm -hmm. The two alternatives. Yeah. We don't have so many users of these plugins, but yeah, removing everything is going to be a problem. So we don't want to trigger left part with uh, our own infrastructure, right? Which of these do you think is going to be easiest to get agreement on? Let's we'll start with that one. Uh, where do you see left pad happening? This 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 isn't workflow API. You're muted. I'm not, yeah, muted. I didn't. I didn't understand your question, Daniel. Could you ask your question again? Right. So, um, I, I, one of the topics was removing all artifacts, and Oleg mentioned left pad uh, happening in our infrastructure. But realistically, we're discussing Combiware plugins and not, you know, workflow API or mailer. So I don't really see left pad happening. And the additional problem is the plugin repository with the claim was CompuWare common configuration, which is a dependency of a lot of the CompuWare plugins. So um, there's already a necessary mini left pad happening because of that uh, alone. I, I forgive my not knowing what left pad is. Could you give me a high level summary? I, I... It was uh, an attack, a distribution uh, attack, or... a package uh, on uh, uh, NPM that uh, half of other NPM packages depended on. So basically, it led uh, to various kinds of build issues, uh, okay. even uh, and also dependency issues for those pulling NPMs. I think the impact that uh, one of the companies starting. Uh, okay, got it. Thank you. Thanks for the summary. So back to back to Basel's question, which of these is the easiest one for the most likely for us to get agreement on? Let's let's talk to that one first. Well, I think I think it, from my point of view, it's the first one because we only have three business days to deal with it. So it seems 
obvious to me that we need to address that as soon as possible. So I hope that we could agree on that. Right, but also three business days is for the one repository they complained about. Fair enough. Yeah, so I guess I guess we've got another, which would be even even smaller, a narrow make one CompuWare BMC repository private. But it's the common that you said, Daniel, has multiple dependencies above it, multiple things that depend upon it. Well, yeah, but dependencies are realistically at the level of uh, Maven artifacts or oh, okay. uh, distributed right. plugins rather than uh, GitHub repositories. Got so it. one could be done fairly uh, easily with little side effects. Got it. Thank you. Thanks for the clarity. Okay. So it feels like we do have these, these proposals for discussion. Um, agreement that the first is the is this likely the simplest one for us to get agreement on what shall, how we shall how shall we proceed? Um, any further discussion needed on this one? I, I'm prone to say let's call for a, a so, hear people's objections or a vote. Yeah. yeah. So technically, there is alternative three. Check whether there are offending clients in plugins and uh, take private all of them or that have the same computer reference. But oh, yeah. right. the yeah, it, so the problem is that the complaint looks the complaint looks invalid to me. And the other problem is that one of the maintainers said they fixed it, so they rewrote repo history to do something. Um and I don't know whether what they did is sufficient because the complaint is so bad. Um, so at this point we can take it private, but if the maintainer says it's cool, we've done the thing, we basically have no way of confirming it. And if we tell GitHub trust and safety, Hey, we did the thing, but we took the repo also private. They will tell us, well, we cannot look at it if it's private. <laughs> so, um, seems like a catch 22 situation. If we make it private and then tell the maintainers to figure it out. I, I, okay. I, I, Alternative if... is uh, transferring to BMC because uh, after that uh, they basically own it and we don't care. Uh, but yeah, it requires uh, action from their side, which is not given. So transfer the plugin repository to the maintainers, mm -hmm. to one or more of the maintainers. Basically, okay. take private now and then move, so that we that it's never public in our org. Right. Yeah. Alternatively, we can make it private and then do the uh, thing below uh, where we say, "Oh, well, it was mentioned earlier. We need a confirmation from them that uh, they have no objections to the repositories that they maintain." Mm -hmm. Right, that could also be a next action so that we can basically say, Yeah, it's cool that you rewrote history, but it's not good enough. We need you to get us official confirmation that we're okay hosting this, otherwise, it's never going to be restored. Right, that might also be a, a position we can take. Mm -hmm. Was well, good to me. Okay, so. Are we ready to call for? Uh, I'm 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 sorry. I'm still not seeing exactly the the path forward. So, Daniel, do you have a recommended path forward? It's make just the specific repos private. Make them all private. I don't think these alternatives have enough detail for me to vote on them yet because they don't they don't mm. specify they don't have a pending clause to talk about when we would undo the action. Uh, okay. It might, it might be good to talk about the other three things and come back to this one. How 
How do we, we feel about the second proposal about blocking future releases pending restoration of OSI compatible license? Are there any? Is there anything to discuss there, or is that proposal pretty clear? Do we only uh, block releases for the plugins that have adopted a non-free license, or do we block everything? Uh, the, 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 there's no alternative. It would be it would be just future releases of non OSI. I, I could add that word to it. Right, but then we also need to monitor their other plugins because if they change the license, then it's kind of a mini whack a mole situation. Uh, I I try to assume that people aren't going to act in bad faith. So I think if we do it for one, it should be. I don't I don't feel a need to monitor. Well, uh, we block one, uh, we'll uh, give them a warning in the pull request. So I think it should be enough. When you say one, do you mean uh, there are four plugins that currently have a non-free license, four or five? Yeah, so basically that uh, repository permission update request that uh, blocks uh, all of them. So basically, this is the warning for the rest of the plugins. Okay. Anything that anything else to change in that second bullet point? Okay, so I think that one's ready to that one's ready to vote on or or whatever. What about for the last two? Is as the are the are the the last two proposals either with including both alternatives? Are they? Are they clear enough, or do we need to clarify it? And do we need to clarify them further? Yeah, one question. So, what was the license uh, before um, they changed it? MIT. Okay, so with MIT, we are fine because we are not committed to providing the code on demand. So even if they rewrote the history, it's not our problem. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I Sorry, think they're willing to phrase. Go, go ahead, Daniel. Excuse me. Uh, Oleg, what was your point uh, with MIT? So basically, the point is uh, if we, uh, the plugins were distributed under GPL. Like it happens for a few plugins within our ecosystem, that the fact that they rewrote the history maintains us to remove all the artifacts because we cannot be remain compliant with the GPL license. But for uh, MIT license, uh, I think that the alternative two would be enough. Uh, no, because the source jars still have the sources. It okay. doesn't matter whether the repo exists or not. So yeah, you're right. Yeah, Alex, that's related to one of your open pull requests to update sender too. Uh, we have a few plugins that have no SCM, and but there are source jars. So as far as I'm concerned, that's no problem. But you know, just a side note. Okay. Um, yeah. Anyway, we have only a handful of GPL plugins. What should I say? Great. <laughs> so back to back to oh. Basil's question. Are the alternatives as phrased for suspend distribution and for remove copyware from remove from artifact repository, are those sufficient? Are they well enough described for us to decide which one we want to do? To mute myself. Sorry, I forgot to mute myself while I was typing. Um, I, I, I think I've clarified the first one enough for me to be able to understand it. So there's actually six if you consider the idea of trans of transferring, because it would be transferring, but in addition to making it private. I think, I think that's what Oleg was, was saying earlier. And the and and. I think my complaint was invalid because I forgot that I had wrote up at the top that it would be pending, blah, blah, blah. So above all those six alternatives, there is a pending statement. So I think I think these are all I think these proposals are, are all sufficient for me. They, they all seem complete in my mind. 
Okay, so in, in this case, then the, the pending clause here is saying that the way for them to undo these changes would be they have to provide us confirmation that the claims have been rescinded and future claims won't be made. Yeah, right. I think that would apply to all six of the alternatives. Right, okay. So the key Great. point is that this is not pending an OSI license because the issue of marking the repositories private has nothing to do with OSI and purely to do with GitHub trust and safety. Whereas for the bottom two, uh, suspending distribution and removing from artifactory, uh, the, the confirmation is dependent on both the trust and safety issue and the OSI compatible license, at least for alternative one. Right. Yeah, these proposals look complete to me. Okay, are we ready to to go ahead with which 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 one does each of the each person recommend or prefer for a vote? Are we ready for a vote? Do we want to vote on each one, or do we want to? Do we want to write down first which ones each person prefers? Doesn't mm. matter, or maybe it doesn't matter. No, I think that's a good idea. So if there are preferences, I'm I'm certainly easily swayed for Daniel's preferences in, in many cases. So I would love to hear preferences from others. I have a strong preference for alternative two on the um, repositories private. And as far as Blocking future releases, I'm in favor of that. I guess this, I guess this would be my vote if you want to consider it that. Uh, or, but for the second bullet point, I'm in, I'm in favor of that. Um, and as far as suspending distribution, I'm in favor of alternative one. And as far as removing from artifactory, I'm in favor of alternative two. So for what it's worth. Thanks. Daniel, are you willing to share? You, do you have preferences? Oh, right. Do nothing is a valid alternative. Yes. Okay. Or it is an alternative. Good. Let's note that. Thank you. Good. I agree with Basil on suspending distribution. Okay, so, so suspend oops, suspending distribution. So the okay, got it. Thanks. Um block future releases. Yep, definitely, because otherwise they just create more trash that I need to delete. Um I would like to abstain on the artifact repository one because. I would vote for alternative one because alternative two is way more annoying to implement. So as the one who needs to click the buttons, <laughs> I, I vote for clicking fewer buttons, which is perhaps not the purest motivation. I, but that's a motivation. I like it. Okay, so you're saying alternative one is fewer button clicks for you. Yeah, okay. I can basically move over all of the top level um, artifact directories rather than the versions that we don't like individually. Got it. Okay. And do you have a preference on the make repos private? Uh, alternative one until we get a second complaint and once there's a second complaint everything okay so uh, although I'm, I'm okay i with don't that too. so alternative 1.5 <laughs> right okay unless okay so 1.5 is is i get it is halfway between 1 and 2 in the sense of oh somebody else is typing it good Yeah, I'm okay with that as well. Right. That makes that that says, hey, if they don't fix it, it has more severe consequences. Okay. You can say that I'm 
You, you could put my name down as being okay with that as well. Yeah. Okay. Great. Oleg? I'm fine with me. So, well, basically I take uh, everything okay. except uh, alternative zero. Okay, so you're okay with any one of them? Uh, yeah, so I lean towards uh, uh, 1.5. Okay. Um, and okay, and good. Lock future mm -hmm. releases. Do you have a preference there? I uh, hear one, of course. And for everything else, uh, uh, I think to uh, I would uh, prefer to take it safely. Um, but yeah. So did I did I represent that correctly? Yes. Okay, Alex. Um, for the first one, I go with alternative one dot five. Okay. Yeah, for the second one, uh, oh, all that up. Uh, alternative one. Okay. Uh, artifact says uh, I know suspend distribution. I go with alternative one. And for artifact re removal, I have no strong preference. Okay. Uh, so you also do not wish to exclude one option, like like Oleg did with not alternative zero. Uh, alternative zero. Uh, you can include me into alternative one if this is less work, but. I have no strong preference there, given GitHub doesn't control that part. So you like both one and two? Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm fine with both ones. OK, let's so, see. So we need to add Alex to number two, right? Oh, yes, got it. OK. okay. All right, and for me, yeah, I think alternative 1.5. Lock future releases, yes. Suspend distribution. Yeah, I'm alternative one, I think, there. And then I'm prone to alternative one here as well. And I admit it, it's because I like it easier. So what we've got then based on that is we've got a split. Bruno, did you want to give voice to any of these items? Yeah, thank you, Mark. So for the first part, alternative five. I'm sorry, I'm the only one. <laughs> okay. Go. Um, next one, alternative one. And then alternative two for this one. Okay. All right, next. And for the last part, alternative two, 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 sorry. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, so let's go from top to bottom. I think we've got some that are clear winners. So here, that one wins, right? Sounds good to me. Okay, and Daniel, I assume you're the person who would actually implement that, or is, does, do we need to talk to somebody else? I don't know who the org admins are for that one. Uh, I think I can do that, yeah. Okay, great. All right, the next one, this one we have, uh, oh, I should put the action item here, just a minute. Daniel, back. Scroll okay. down a bit, I'm taking the note further down. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, good. You're taking action, so I don't have to put it there. Thank you. Thanks very much. Perfect. Okay, good. Next, block future releases, pending restoration of OSI compatible client license. That one's a clear winner. I, I think that's 
already expressed in your no it's not expressed in an artifact permissions updater yet but is this one that you would get the action item daniel or is it something else that, something any one of us could do do you have a preference Scroll on. Scroll oh, good. On. I just read okay great all right suspend distribution of CompuWare bmc plugins we've got a a four four to two pre preference for alternative one uh, Oleg and Bruno, would you be okay with alternative one? Yeah, sure. Oleg, that is okay. Yes, <laughs> fine. Small yes. Okay. Uh, so it should it should well, at least get their uh, attention, right? No, I was paying attention. Attention, actually. No, no, I, I mean just, it should I, it should get the attention of Copyware and BMC if we do alternative right. one. Yeah, mm, I uh, agree that it would get the attention. Yeah, I'm not sure. What, uh, well, uh, it may happen that uh, they move uh, out and host the plugins on their own, but let's see. Sure. Yeah. So, like, just to be for sure confirmation, you're okay with alternative one that I make this one bold and we set an action yeah, item for that. I'm okay. Uh, if I was doing uh, a decision uh, just on my own, I would rather go for two mm -hmm. uh, uh, because it's less destructive. Uh, but uh, yeah, if, uh, uh, taking the votes, uh, okay, we go with one. So just for the record, um, these plugins have a combined total of around 200 installations that we are aware of. So it's not, again, this is not workflow API. This is not mailer, mm -hmm. email X, anything like that. Yeah. So, so far, very... the, it's rather important to have a common uh, process and policy for cases like that in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. So taking uh, the votes, yeah, it seems to be uh, the choice of one. Okay, great. And then the last one has a much more a, a split four three in favor of alternative two. Since I'm not volunteering to implement this, I would be okay with uh, alternative one, given that it's easier to implement. So. I don't want to make things more difficult for the implementers. Okay. It, it, I'm, I'm, I will, I will attempt, let's say I will attempt alternative two and it, if it becomes a, an unreasonable mess, um, uh, I'll, I'll um, check in with you again. You don't need to check in with me. I'm okay either way. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I would think if you find Alternative two is an unreasonable mess. I, th uh, I think we should call for alternative one is an acceptable fallback. That makes I, sense I, to me. Yep. Yeah, okay. Thank you. I doubt. I really doubt that becomes necessary. Uh, but uh, it's nice to have that safety net. Thank you. Great. All right. Any other any other comments or discussion on the topic? We've got the four action items. Daniel, thanks very much for capturing those. Got it. Okay. Um, how do we reach out uh, to maintainers and explain the situation to them and what we expect from them as follow up? So I sent email to the maintainers earlier this morning. I sent email to Dave Dresser, one of the maintainers, and I think I was going, I, I'd assume somebody from the board and I'm happy to volunteer sends them an email saying, look, here are the decisions we've made based on this. Here are your, 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 your pending these actions. This is what we've done. And, and you need to take actions or this will be the ongoing state. Right. So um, based on what we decided, uh, we are now about to suspend distribution of around 10 plugins. Mm -hmm. So there's probably a few more people uh, 
who mm. inform should be contacted and informed about this and where you can also request uh further action be taken right so the way i would the way i'll i think i would do that is i will look in repository permissions updater for the the maintainers of those plugins look in accounts.jenkins.io for their email addresses i'm an administrator there so i can read those and send email to those email addresses saying this is what we're doing this is what we have done uh does that does that seem sensible so mark to send here i'm going to put it here mark just to notify maintainers of the approximately 10 plugins what actions we've taken and will take and how they can um have us restore distribution um, right as a as a quick side note uh, when i've previously reached out to maintainers about security vulnerabilities i've always also or i've often also checked the account app i don't know whether a desync of uh contact information is still a problem based on the current jira configuration but it was in the past so that the jira email address was invalid and they would not get information uh, emails from there but they had a, a correct uh, contact address in the account app. Uh, yeah, so and I was intending to only use the account app because that's the one that they have to use for password reset. I wasn't even going to look at Jira. Ah, okay. Is, is that okay? That's That was my thought because that's where I frequently go if I need to convert a, a Jenkins account name to an email address. Mm, seems, seems fine, yeah. Okay, based on email and if they have a bogus email address well address in accounts.jenkins.io okay good all right and daniel could you gent provide the list of the specific plugins that way I'm not guessing which ones are, are owned and you and I risk having. Oh, perfect. It's already in the pull request. Okay. Yep. Great. I just propose suspending everything and have them figure it out. Okay, excellent. All right, so that's that's perfect. Since you've listed them, I can just use your list and I'm set. Great. Okay. Which also goes beyond, for the record, also goes beyond Compuware. There are also a few uh, B, BMC plugins specifically right. that look maintained by BMC folks. Um, uh, and I mean, that was just, you know, uh, I don't right. know how to say that, but uh, not immediately related, but same org. So uh, right. they all got caught. And that that makes sense to me. Okay, thank you. All right, so I think we've got those five action items. Any objections or concerns about those action items? Okay, thank you. Thanks for the work, Daniel, striving to preserve our access to the GitHub organization. That would be disastrous. We we got locked out of GitHub. All right. Anything else on the on this plugin suspension topic? Okay, we're up against a, only four more minutes till our hour. I'd propose to skip news and action items, unless there are items that you want to specifically highlight in them. Okay, next then, JIRA license changes are complete. Uh, nothing else to say there except thanks to Atlassian and thanks to the Linux Foundation. CDF topics, I'm going to, I've scheduled to do a presentation to the CDF Technical Oversight Committee April 12 on the status of the Jenkins project. I'll create the presentation, share it with all of you so that you can see it, give comments, et cetera. 
And I specifically asked in the last meeting for confirmation, they're okay with it being a wider project review, not just a technical topics review. And they specifically wanted it a wider health of the project review. Next item then was LFX Tools Working Group. Oleg and I both attended an exercise, a session there today, next meeting in a month. Um, LFX Insights is the next generation of what we use today as DevStats. Ah. And sorry about that. Come on, come on. There we go. So next topic then was on community activity, just to be have people aware Artifactory bandwidth reduction project keeps going. I finally gave up and publicly disclosed the abusing IP address and still not made significant progress on it, but uh, Artifactory is gonna attempt to block at the IP level. Google Summer of Code, we've got 22 draft proposals now up for review. Thanks everybody. April 4 is when proposals submit. And the last topic for this group was the one that I most wanted to be sure. Usually in the past, we changed the meeting time for daylight saving so that we would keep a consistent time of day for our European contributors. Does that, is that a preference, Oleg, for you, Alex, for you, Daniel, for you, Bruno, for you, or would, are you okay with us staying at UTC? And Uli isn't here, so I can't ask him. He was the one who had the biggest challenge with it, I think. For me, it's okay. So plus or minus one hour for Mondays is okay. Okay. Alex? Yeah, I'm with Oleg here. Plus or minus one hour doesn't affect me too much. Okay. Uh, Daniel, any change for you in terms of if we stick to a time of day or stay with DST? I'm not around enough to get an opinion on this. Okay, great. So I'll double check with Uli Hafner. Consider the question opened and not resolved at this point. Uh, daylight saving is invoked in Europe a week or two from now. Is that right? You um, next Sunday. Week? Next Sunday. Okay. All right. And Bruno, uh, do you have a, a preference that you wanted to note? Uh, Daniel, I don't come often enough to have a voice on this. Okay, great. Any other topics before we conclude for today? All right, thanks everyone.